my top three tips for helping improve table formatting in Microsoft Word to make your reports look more professional. That's what I'm gonna share with you in this video because here on Engineers Upgrade, I like to share the sorts of tools, tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to help people improve their professional and business skills. Now that could be uh, improving documents in Microsoft Word, it could be how to review CVs, how to improve processes in your workplace. So follow along, because that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. The top three tips that I have for improving table formatting in Microsoft Word. Number one is to use column width to improve readability. So I've got up here on a table, a table for an engineering report that I put together as a sample. If you're interested in that, I'll leave the link in the description below. But I've put together as a sample for this channel, the sorts of reports that I'd put together at my workplace. Now, in this case, you can see that there's a lot of text in the middle here. There's a number on the right hand side and there's some sort of heading here on the left. Now, that's it, it feels a bit unbalanced already. So what we're going to do is use this. You can use this column width to separate out what the emphasis would be. Do you want people to read this quantity number? Is that the most important piece of information? Do you want people to know that that this uh, rail type or this this name? It's a really a name on the left hand side is the most important piece of information. And we can use the column width to help figure that out. So in, in this case, I want people to read the description. So we can extend the column width like that to make the description the focus and the quantity is no longer the focus. Now that, that le actually leads well into the second tip because if, you, if I go back to the way it was, you can see that some of the text has flown over to the page and that's not a great look. I try to avoid any time where I call it orphan text like this flows over onto the next page because if you were to read this page in isolation, you wouldn't know what's going on. You have to refer to the table on the previous page. I imagine you're an executive in a boardroom and you're, you're quite busy. You've got this report uh, that, that you, and you're interested in the reference in this table. You've opened up the page uh, to this report and some of the text is missing. It's on the next page. You have to flip over. It's a hassle. It might get missed. You don't have a lot of time. Now, of course, the table is complete with the information there. I mean, technically everyone should read the whole table, but trust me that your audience won't spend the time reading it that you did writing it. So, so in this case, the, the, apart from uh, reformatting the column that I showed you just previously, if you go to uh, table design along the top, oh, sorry, layout along the top, and then click on properties. Make sure your cursor was in the row that's concerned because you can go to row and say allow row to break across page and disable that. I'd recommend that disabling that most times where possible. I found very few occasions where you actually want the row to break across a page because if your table is getting so big and packed full of information that the row will break across the page usefully without this orphan text effect, then chances are your table is too long and should be split up into sections anyway. So remove this tick box, allow row to break across page, and there it will put on the next page. Now, again, because our objective was to make sure that the information is captured, regardless of where someone jumps to in the report, I'd also recommend coming up to the heading row. Uh, just put your cursor in the heading row, again, click properties, go back to that row and say, repeat as header row on the top of each page. Now the header row will be there on each page. The top of the table will show up on each page so that if you do happen to read this in isolation, you know what's going on. The best way, however, <laughs> is still to use the column width to try to capture that all on one page so that it doesn't cause any problems. So you can adjust the column width to make it look nice uh, in terms of, say you had a text heavy uh, box in your table, like, like I do here, a text heavy column. You can adjust that column width to adjust the length of the table. And that's one of the tricks I like to do when controlling the flow of a document, when controlling uh, which parts words puts on, Word puts on each page, is to format the table, the width of the table, the width of the columns, to adjust the length of the table to make sure that the right information I want is captured on the same page. Sometimes I'll want a page, sometimes I'll, I'll pay a lot of attention to page composition. Oh, sorry, I did another video on this if you're interested in, in how I put these figures together. But sometimes I'll want heading, figure, list, and table to be laid out exactly like this. And I will adjust the width of the table and the width of the figure to make sure that that's reflective. 
Now, the third tip is to use centering for emphasis. So one of the things, I'll, I'll, I'll just adjust this so that description, we go back to the first one where the description is the most important thing in this table. But let's say you still wanted quantity to stand out. Because of the top left alignment here, quantity might not immediately jump out to you as an important piece of information on this page. So the way I would handle this one is to select all of these numbers and, th and this center, what I'm about to do works best for numbers, but to come up here and do center center so that the numbers stand out in the center of the page and to then adjust the headings, uh, this heading here in particular to be centered again so that quantity can be read down. But the last trick here is to make sure that these are vertically centered as well. So to come up here and press this alignment button, so center, or center left, so that now the table can be read in a couple of different ways depending on what information wants to come out of it. So uh, the reason I've gone for centering like this, despite the large amount of text, is so that someone can read this, look at this table and say, okay, we've got the rail, the switch, stock and joint over here. Then we've got our quantities, 5, 7, 13 and done. If that's all the information they wanted out of this table, they're now finished and they can move on. If someone wants to read that description and we're giving the reader the option now to read the description or to read the quantity, you can say, okay, switch, let's read the description for that movable component. Stock, fixed component, joint, a connection. So they, the reader now has a choice of joining up our, our uh, sort of mini titles on the left, our switch, stock and joint with the quantities, or they can join them up with the description. And we've given our reader that option by using centering. So I'd highly recommend, uh, it's probably a lesson learned. I can't, I can't think of any principle to give you on, on what sort of centering to use, but I'd probably recommend wherever you have numbers, use the center and center. Wherever you have text and titles, use the center and left aligned. So some of the lessons that I've learned over the years of putting these reports together as a consultant, just to make sure that uh, the table flows nice and we give our reader the best opportunity to gather as much information as possible from our tables in the least amount of time. Because like I said, imagine you're the executive in the boardroom trying to make decisions quickly. You're not gonna have time to read all the information in the report. You might already know what switch, stock and joint are. You don't need that description. You just want the quantities. We're giving you the option to read however you want to read. And that's something I've tried to do in this report in general. You can can, I'll leave a link in, in the description below to the video where I put this together because it's uh, giving information in a few different ways. You can look at the list, you can look at this graphic, you can look at this table to try to uh, get the story of the report, it, even though these are slightly different pieces of information. So, so just to recap those three tips, use the column width to add emphasis to the report or to stop things flowing over the page. Confirm to Word that you don't want things to flow over the page incorrectly by setting the allow box or that uh, repeat header box to make sure that the information is captured no matter where the reader lands in the table. And then to use centering, different centering types to add emphasis and to give the reader the option on which parts of the table they're going to read. Uh, now, one of my pet peeves is when people just leave the, all the text as upper left, have really long tables that flow over pages, and it's just impossible to read. I, it really disappoints me when I see that because people just aren't going to get the information from your table. And so what's the point of putting it together? So if you're wondering how Engineered Upgrade can help you further, there are two things that you can do right now. The first one, hit that like button down below. YouTube will then suggest to you new videos to, on the tools and tips and tricks that I'm sharing that will help you in your professional and business life. Number two, follow along and watch those videos because they'll be full packed full of helpful tips and tricks like this, helpful processes that I've developed over the years as an engineer and consultant that you can use today to help you out professionally in the business world. My name's Chris and hopefully I'll see you in those next videos.